Hi guys, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my second try a chapter tag. So I, I don't know why I always call it a try a chapter tag. I think it was a tag, but now it's just like a try a chapter thing that people do. Anyways, the first time I did this, I did it with 10 arcs that I owned that I was 50-50 about because I am moving and so I want to unhaul books that I'm not going to end up reading. Today I have like 20 that I'm going to be going through instead. I'm not going to be giving in-depth explanations about what these books are about because I don't really know, but I will give you guys my first impressions of them, what I'm kind of gauging from the story and you know, we'll go from there. Okay, so the first book we have is Wicked As You Wish by Rin Chupeko about like a fairy tale that went wrong and now they're in the modern world and there's a girl who can negate magic and the prince is trying to get them all back to their their actual land and not be stuck in some, what is it, rural Arizona. Then we have The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I don't know what this is about because it's a Lisa Jewell book and I don't like to go into my thrillers knowing anything, but it says be careful who you let in. Then we have The Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo. This is about four outcasts who are in this place where magic is kind of dangerous. And when one of the characters delivers a vial of dark magic, it's basically like a weapon, and then the four of them have to come together to save their world. The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davies. It says Westworld meets The Handmaid's Tale, so I'm guessing that these are girls who are like bred to basically breed and then they escape and that's what it's about. Then we have Furious Things which is about a girl who has anger management problems and her dealing with them. Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This is about a girl who I think is a pop star and a dude. Sophia Princess Among Beasts by James Patterson with Emily Raymond. This is like a very short book about a girl who is a princess. <laughs> Then we have The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. This is about a very secluded finishing school in which there were ten girls, but then the tenth girl goes missing. So that's what I know about that one. Then we have The Girl King by Mimi Yu. It's about two sisters who are vying for the throne, but then when their dad passes away, he gives it to the male cousin. And so it's about one of them trying to reclaim their like inheritance. Then we have Amelia Westlake Was Never Here by Erin Go. This is about a Australian high school in which the girls are trying to go back against the misogyny that's there. Throw Like a Girl, which features a girl who is initially on the softball team but then punches someone and gets thrown off of it. And then in order to prove herself, she ends up taking the quarterback's place on the football team as his temporary replacement in order to prove herself, which sounds kind of strange, but yeah. Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. This is a retelling of the Count of Monte Cristo gender swapped in space. Then we have The Queen's Assassin in which we have Caledon, he is the Queen's Assassin. And then we have Shadow, who has been training all her life to become a Queen's Assassin. And the two of them had to come together to team up. Here there are monsters, and this is Blair Witch meets Imaginary Girls. Sisterhood turned toxic. Countish of the Stars, this is an Anastasia retelling set in space. Four Days of You and Me by Miranda Keneally. This is about two teens on May 7th for four years from freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, and how their relationship changes every year. War and Speech this is about a girl who transfers to a new school and finds out that the speech and debate team is kind of the big bullies of the school and so she decides to try and infiltrate them. Then we have The Herd which is basically, it's some sort of like a thriller mystery where this CEO lady ends up dying and she was the head of The Herd and it's basically this female run corporation and then it's about three of the women doing something to figure out what happened. So then we have They Wish They Were Us which is about how there was a murder a couple of years ago where a guy apparently killed his girlfriend and then we follow present day where a girl gets a text message saying that the guy is actually innocent and so she investigates it. And then we have The Return which is about how this group of friends, one of the girls went missing and then years later she returns and not everything is as it seems. Okay, so those are all the books that I'm about to try a chapter of, and I will come back after I've read a chapter of five of them, give an update, and then continue doing that until we reach the end. And I'll let you guys know which I think I'm gonna keep, and which I think I'm gonna unhaul. And you guys can definitely look forward to me filming an unhaul very soon with a lot of books. I'm excited, this is my first ever unhaul, and so yeah, let's do this. Okay, so I read those five. And I can instantly tell you that the one I'm most interested in is They Wish They Were Us, which is kind of interesting because um, Julie from Pages and Pens read this and did not like it, but it says Gossip Girl meets One of Us is Lying, and I can definitely feel the One of Us is Lying vibes in this, as well as um, it reminds me of People Like Us by Dana Meal. So 
I think I'm really gonna keep this because the first chapter really intrigued me. But there's something about it being called players, like people are players with a capital P and the senior players have like a table and there's normally eight of them but now there's just six because that girl who died and then her boyfriend left and I'm really intrigued to find out exactly what it means and what happened and so I'm gonna keep this. Then we have The Return, which is just kind of weird. The first chapter was so long. It was like 48 pages, which I was like, really? And they're all set a lot older and you know, the girl goes missing and you see what their lives are like for the two years that she's gone missing. And it just, it really didn't grasp me, which is kind of sad because I was so interested in this book and the cover was just really cool. We have Here There Are Monsters, which basically starts out about the girl's younger sister having gone missing and them being like, what happened? her and her bed is just full of leaves. I don't know, like I feel this is gonna have some sort of like a supernatural aspect to it. It kind of gives me those kind of vibes, but I'm not really interested in that sort of a thing, so I don't think I'm gonna keep this. The Herd actually interests me because it's basically about this woman-run organization called The Herd, which is run by Eleanor, and she has her own company, which is this ethically sourced like beauty company, but then the whole idea of The Herd is this like woman-owned corporation where like other women are outsourced to like do their own job. I don't know. It's a little confusing from the first chapter. I'm not entirely sure how it functions. It ended with the main girl like deleting four voicemails from her phone. So it actually does intrigue me, which I wasn't expecting. I thought out of all these, this would be the one I'd be least interested in. So the fact that it's piqued my interest is kind of cool. So I think I might keep this. And then we have The Tenth Girl by Sarah Faring. I was 50-50 on this. I think I'm gonna ask around to see what other people think because it is um, personalized to me. And because of that, I kind of think I want to keep it. The writing wasn't bad and it definitely seems intriguing, this whole idea of this finishing school being closed down for like all these years and now finally being reopened, so I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to move on to this stack and I will be back. <laughs> Okie dokie, so I've got two that I'm definitely not gonna keep on haul. That is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell and Princess, Sophia Princess Among Beasts. First off, it's the writing is really bland in this. I normally love stories that take place like with a sort of medieval royalty twist to it, but this definitely is just not my kind of writing and I'm not surprised it's a James Patterson book, no offense to him. And then I looked up online what the synopsis actually is and I don't like the sound of it at all, so that's not happening. Sometimes Lisa Jewell's writing really encaptures me, but sometimes it doesn't. This, I feel like, is just not going to be the one for me. So it's basically about how 25 years ago there was a baby left in a house where three people were murdered, and there were apparently four of the children that went missing, and so I think that we're following those four children plus the baby, as the baby, now that she's turned 25, has inherited the estate that she was, like, found in. So it sounds, it sounds cool, but Lisa Jewell's writing is... Like I said, 50-50 for me, and this just doesn't feel like the one I want to spend my time reading. Wicked As You Wish, I was actually the most hesitant about out of all these, but the writing is really intriguing, and we already found out that the prince is gay, and I was like, ooh! Friendship's really adorable between him and the girl, because since the girl nullifies magic, he can't hurt her in any way, and he's so used to, like, his touch, or, like, his kiss, like, hurting people. So it seems really sweet and I'm, I'm intrigued to see what it's like. Into the Crooked Place, I'm still 50-50 about because I've heard not great reviews about it, even though the first chapter did really intrigue me. I love the idea of a girl who is somewhat of a criminal, that she's kind of dealing with this like unsavory magic and is like conning some people and that she has a debt to others. It's just that sort of a premise is one that I'm always really intrigued by. Plus it sounds Kind of like it's going to be Six of Crows-esque, but in a more magical world. And then we have The Good Luck Girls, which instantly gave me Girls of Storm and Girls of Paper and Fire vibes. Because we start off on Clementine's first night. It's of her 16th birthday or something, where she is finally, like, it's her night. And she is bought by this man, and then when he goes to, you know, take her in a sexual way, she kills him! by accident. <laughs> and so that's basically what the first chapter is, and then it flashes back to 12 hours earlier, so this really intrigues me. I'm actually now going to make dinner because I've been extremely unproductive today. I ended up napping, even though I really shouldn't have, because I got up early and was like so gung-ho to do everything, and then it was really crappy weather outside, so I was just like, mmm, nah. <laughs> so I'm gonna make dinner because it's 7.30 at night. And then I'm going to move on to 
these five books. Okay, dokie. So, the two I am going to be unhauling are The Girl King by Mimi Yu and Tarnash of the Stars by Rosie Thor. This is a kind of sci-fi book about a chick who has a mechanical heart and she is known as the technician and does other mechanical things, but it's actually outlawed to do mechanical alterations of the body. And then The Girl King, it just didn't really capture me, the idea of like there being these gods and then this chick and just, it's just, no, it's also really long and I just haven't heard that great things about it and it didn't capture me. The Queen's Assassin, however, which I've heard pretty average things about, was actually a really interesting beginning. I loved kind of seeing how everything begun and the idea of how there are these scrolls and how the magic is distributed throughout and the idea of this like whole blood oath that binds this kid and I know I'm really intrigued to see how this keeps on going. It has a lot of potential in my opinion. Then we have Scaven to the Stars which captured me instantly. So we follow Silverfish, although her name's actually Amaya, and she seven years ago was brought onto this ship and whenever you enter this ship you pretty much renounce everything. You were given a name of some kind of like bug and they're literally all thought of as bugs by the captain. He can basically just like squash them as he pleases. And it starts off like you know with her gutting fishes and that's what some of them do for manual labor and there's like all these different things that go on in the ship and then in the first chapter you find out she saves someone and by saving this guy she adds on like an extra four years to her service but this guy could be very rich and I'm intrigued. I know nothing but the Count of Monte Cristo, so I think this is going to be a really cool read. And then I'm going to look this up in Goodreads to see if I want to keep this, but Furious Things, I'm actually really intrigued by. I don't know, there's just something about this premise that is enticing to me. The only issue is, is I think that the main character is in love with her stepbrother, which is not something I like. So I'm going to look into it because if that's like a big part of it, then... I don't want to read this, so we'll see. And then lastly, we have the final five books to this. It's taken me a while to get through all 20 of these books, but I'm pumped. <laughs> and we're back for the final round. <laughs> Hi. So I just read the last five books and I found a complete gem. I actually kept on reading. I was like, no, Madison, you have to stop. It is 11 p.m. at night. You have made the bad decision. Was it four or five piles? I either read 20 books or 25 books, which is as Katie from Katie's Book and point out to me, 20 chapters or 25 chapters, which my brain didn't realize it was gonna take me so freaking long to do. I feel like such a dumbass. I was like, oh, I'll just read a chapter from 20 books. That'll be easy. And then she was like, you know, that's 20 chapters. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I did enjoy War and Peace. It's very interesting. And I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. So the main girl in it, she has had to move to this new school because her dad was just put in prison because he's like a white collar criminal. And this school is like a really hoity toity art school where the speech and debate team are like the hot shit and can do whatever they want. And it starts off with her like insulting them on the first day and it is hilarious. So I think this is actually gonna be really good, which I was a bit skeptical about. Then we have the gem I found and that is Four Days of You and Me. This was so hilarious. I kept on reading it and I wanna keep reading it even though I have an entire TBR to get to. This came out on May 5th and oh my God, it's so cute. So the two main characters are technically enemies to each other, but it seems more like she thinks of him as an enemy than he thinks of her. And I guess their hatred from each other comes because he won student body president. And so I'm so excited. This is going to be really good. <laughs> then we have a maybe, and that is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. The writing is interesting. It's very, um, shoot, what's the word? Like something of mine, like flow of mine, flow of piece of... What is the word? I'm just not entirely sure, like we didn't even get to meet the female yet, and so I'm not totally sure if this is going to be something I love, but I think I might put this as well on the Twitter poll. Then we have Amelia Westlake was never here. This is interesting because it's set in Australia, and so I can understand why there are some people who don't like this because the way that it is written is very... It's written in a way that makes sense to me, it's very Australian. I know, like the English is very Australian, like it's Australian English. <laughs> 
I feel like this could go either way. I think I'm still going to keep it because I looked up reviews and they've gotten really good reviews and I think that it has a lot of good potential and I totally understand where a lot of this feeling is coming from because it made me think back to my phys ed days. And then the one book that I'm definitely unhauling is Throw Like a Girl. It does not intrigue me at all. It started off with her, you know, bashing up this chick during a softball game at the very end of it and then she gets kicked out of her private school because there's like a zero tolerance rule and so, no. <laughs> Yes, okay, quickly let me go through the books that I am keeping. So out of the 20 books that I tried, all my stars, I am keeping nine of them. And then I have four that I'm putting into a Twitter poll to see if anyone says I should keep them, all my stars. Oh no, <laughs> stay still. Okay, I'm actually just about to start filming my unhaul video, so if you guys are interested in that, it's going to be very very long but i'm excited for it and yes that is all for this video let me know what you guys thought of it if you did enjoy it please like button down below if you want to see more of me please subscribe to my channel and until next time thanks a bunch guys bye